Hey guys, it's that time of year again when we talk about the best lenses over the last 12 months. This video is going to talk about my favourite three production lenses, plus an honorary mention to two more brand new production lenses, all like a M out, with the star ones also like a screw mount. And then I'll give a special mention to a non Leica lens, which I think any Nikon fans are going to love, but also Voigtlander fans too. Hey guys, Matt here from MrLeica.com. Before we start the list, it's probably worth looking at some of the lenses that I reviewed in 2022. We tested the 7 Artisans 28mm f1.4, the 7 Artisans 28mm f5.6, the 7 Artisans 35mm f2 version 2, the TT Artisan 28 5.6, the TT Artisan 35mm f2 Apo, the TT Artisan's 50mm f0.95, don't worry they're not all Chinese lenses. I also tested the Sigma 35mm f2, the Sigma 65mm f2, the Voigtlander 35 f1.2 version 3 M-out lens, the Voigtlander Helia 40mm f2.8 and the Voigtlander Nocturne 50mm f1. In addition to those I also tested the Leica Noctilux 50mm f0.95, the Leica Noctilux 50mm f1.2 and the Leica Sumlux 90mm f1.4. All three of those lenses are a bit more expensive so they're not going to be in today's video. Okay first up in no particular order the TT Artisan 50mm f0.95 Leica M-out. The reason I prefer this to some of the other fast 50mm offerings is it's less perfect and more arty when shot wide open and that's a look that I'm trying to create. So I'd only recommend this for digital shooters because it is not calibrated out of the box and so I'd use it on a SL series camera like a SL series camera or a like a M-out camera via the Viso Flex or an EVF and then that way you don't need to worry about calibrating it. As I don't bother for film because one it's a bit too big and secondly it's not calibrated out of the box so it's a bit more faff. This is one of my go-to lenses for wedding photography and all my portrait stuff so if you want an affordable fast 50 portrait lens this is my favourite. Favourite lens number two it's actually attached to a camera because I use it that much. You're probably sick of hearing about it if you've seen any of my recent videos. It is the, of course the Voigtlander Helia 40mm f2.8 available in both M-mount and screw mount. The reason it's so good for me is because I particularly love the screw mount vintage Leica cameras, various models and so because it's the only modern screw mount lens it is my go-to screw mount lens. So I say if you shoot M mount just get the M mount version. Highly recommend this lens for film and digital. If you use it on digital it's going to give you a small M camera setup but then you've got a 40 more frame line so it's not ideal on a Leica M camera unless you're using a Leica M3 and then you just use the full viewfinder area. If you're using the like a CL film camera it's great because the CL has got 40mm frame lines and if you're using the digital like a CL because the lens is so small it really suits the small CL setup of the APS-C camera. So if you love small lenses this is a, a must. Lens number three we're back to Chinese lenses I'm afraid this is the TT Artisan 28mm f5.6. This is the only Chinese lens I've tested which feels like a Leica lens. Uh, that makes a little bit of sense because it is basically a, like a Summeron 28 5.6 clone. The biggest drawback with this lens for me personally it is not available in screw mounts. If it was available in screw mount it would be my number one lens of 2022. So please TTR Tans please make us a, a screw mount version. The size is amazing, the build is amazing and I love it for both film and digital. Being a 28mm lens I tend to use it on a Leica M4P because it's only M out so I can't use it on the, the small Barnack cameras. Really really good walkabout lens and yeah highly recommended. So those are my favourite three lenses of the year but what about the honorary mentions? There were two lenses released by Voigtlander in 2022 or maybe just before 2022 and that is the Voigtlander Nocton 50 f1. Fantastic lens if you're an M shooter and if you want to shoot film with a fast lens that's your best alternative if you don't want to get a Leica Noctilux which is obviously a lot more expensive. I don't own that lens because I use the TT Artisan if I want something less perfect. And then I've also got the Leica Noctilux if I want something more Noctilux looking. For my testing I'd say the Voigtlander 50 f1 has got a similar look-ish to the Leica Noctilux 50 0.95 and the TT Artisan has got a similar look to the Leica 
Noctilux 50 F1 version 2, the version I have. So if you prefer a less perfect look, get the TTR design. If you want a more perfectly rendered look, get the Voigtlander. That being said, if you get the Voigtlander 51.2, that is a very, very similar look to the 50 F1 and it's smaller and cheaper. So if you don't think you'll notice the difference between F1 and F1.2, which I think most people wouldn't, the 1.2 is a really good buy. I still might have to get that lens at one point. <laughs> On we mentioned number two again is Voigtlander and this is the Voigtlander Nocturne 35mm f1.2 version 3. The reason it's not in my top three is because I don't own this lens so I don't feel I should have it in my best lenses of 2022. The only reason I don't have it is because I've already got the version 2. The benefits of the version 3 is it's a much smaller lens than the version 2 so you can follow that. The version 2 is pretty big, the version 3 is a much more usable size and the rendering is amazing, it's sharp. It's contrasty and amazing for portraits. That would be my number one recommendation if you're like a CL user that wants to shoot shallow depth of field shots, portraits or otherwise, the Voigtlander Nocturne 1.2. Okay, so those are my top five lenses. What about my honorary mention? I want to give a really special mention to a lens which is not Leica because I also shoot with various other brand film cameras. This is a lens which is built for Nikon F-mount or Nikon. It is the Voigtlander Apo Scopar 90mm f2.8. Now I have done a full review on this lens because there was also an M-mount version made. So you may wonder well why have I got this one and not the, the M-mount. I got this one because I enjoy using Nikon SLR cameras sometimes for say travel and the size of this lens for a 90mm if I take the cap off. The size is just so small it's just you can't not have it and it's got the Apo rendering so this lens on an FE2 or an FM2 or any Nikon camera, absolutely fantastic for film. And it's one of my favorite lenses for walk around photos for, for the extra compression. Obviously stating the obvious, you can obviously adapt this to use on a Leica SL or any other Leica camera. You just need to get a Nikon F2 Leica M adapter. So those are my favorite lenses of 2022. What about my favorite cameras of 2022? Hit subscribe and in my next video, I'll share my favorite cameras of 2022. One film and one digital to, to mix it up a bit. So yeah, look out for that. If you're interested in what were my favorite lenses of 2021 and 2020, I can link those videos next. As always, massive thanks to my amazing patrons. Thanks for watching and yes, see you in the camera video coming soon.